Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. The scribes and the elders in parables. A man planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenant farmers and left on a journey. At the proper time, he sent a servant to the tenants to obtain from them some of the produce of the vineyard. But they seized him, beat him, and sent him away empty-handed. Again he sent them another servant, and that one they beat over the head and treated shamefully. He sent yet another whom they killed, so too many others. Some they beat, others they killed. He had one other to send, a beloved son. He sent him to them last of all, thinking, They will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come, put the tenants to death, and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture passage? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. They were seeking to arrest him, but they feared the crowd, for they realized that he had addressed the parable to them. So they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us begin with the Novena Prayer to St. Peregrine. O great St. Peregrine, you have been called the Wonder Worker because of the numerous miracles which you have obtained from God for those who have had recourse to you. For so many years you bore in your own flesh the debilitating disease of cancer. I seek God's healing. Help me to imitate your enduring faith in the face of my great challenge, that I may trust the Lord as you did in your time of affliction. Help me to find the strength to proclaim God's presence in my life, despite the anguish and fear this disease causes in me and my loved ones. Grin. Aided in this way by your powerful intercession, I will sing to God, now and for all eternity, a song of gratitude for his great goodness and mercy. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle them the fire of thy love. Send forth, O Lord, thy spirit, and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who sent the Holy Spirit to enlighten the hearts of the faithful, grant that we, by the sending of the same Holy Spirit, may be ever truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. This we ask through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Peregrine, pray for us. St. Peter Verona, pray for us. Yesterday, on the Feast of Corpus Christi, we spoke about the centrality of of the Most Holy Eucharist to our life and that incorporation into life of faith, the mystical body of Christ and the family of God. And that is founded in a shoring up of our baptismal promises, our baptismal vocation, our baptismal identity. Adjunct to that and directed to it precisely is the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. And I think it's very important that we talk about this sacrament because so many people still to this day think that the anointing of the sick is the last rites, that you're supposed to receive it right before you die. But this is in fact not the case. The anointing of the sick can even be repeated daily when there is a need. And it's whenever there is a danger of death. 
And that danger of death doesn't have to be proximate. It can be remote. So let's say that you're over a certain age. I'm not going to say what that certain age might be. For the anointing of the sick. If a person is going in for surgery, it's always a reason for the anointing of the sick. If someone is afflicted with cancer, that is a sufficient reason for a frequent reception of the anointing of the sick. The grace that is imparted in this sacrament is profound. And in my experience, it principally manifests itself as peace. And those of you who have fought serious illness in your life, you know and understand how important peace is in order to fight illness. Without peace, or rather, to put it the opposite, when there is anxiety, it makes it that much more difficult, that much more of a struggle to fight against a debilitating disease. And so I ask all of you here who are maybe yourselves fighting cancer or have loved ones who are fighting cancer. And even if you don't right now, you will, because as I say, if the, if the parousia doesn't get us, cancer will, one or, one or the other. That seems to be the way it is these days. Everyone seems to be afflicted by this at some point in their life. Be apostles of the sacrament of the anointing of the sick to others. Help them understand that this is not a sign that they're on the threshold of death, but that it's a sign of divine healing and succor. I have two counterexamples of this. One of them, one of our priests, uh, he was the first priest that I was present for at his death. We have a tradition in the Dominican order that as a brother is dying, if it's possible, to gather around their bed and sing the Salve Regina to them as they die. And so the first person that I was able to do this for, right before, the day before he died, his prior at the time was Father Gerald Buckley. Father Gerald Buckley went in to go give Fabian the anointing of the sick, and Fabian threw him out of the room. <laughs> he says, I'm not dying yet, <laughs> and threw something, and get out of here, you know, because it terrified him, you know, and, and death is scary for anybody. For anybody, it's a terrifying experience. And so Father Gerald went scurrying out of the room. But then finally the next day, they were able to provide him with the anointing of the sick, and in fact, he did die later that evening. So all the brothers who were in the community at that time gathered around and sang the hymn to Our Lady, the Salve Regina, to Fabian as he experienced his transitus. Now, last year, I also happened to be at the death of Father Gerald Buckley. So we were at, his, at Fabian's death together, and then I was at Gerald's death at his bed. And this was a very different disposition towards the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. It was the proper disposition. Father Gerald, when we brought him to the emergency room, and he was suffering tremendously from an ailment, and he was eventually admitted to a room, and they told him that there wasn't anything they could do for the ailment that he was afflicted with. And so the doctor tried in her best bedside manner to let him know that he was going to die. And Father Gerald just lifted his hands and says, I've been training for this my whole life. I've been training for this moment for my whole life. And we were sitting there shaking our heads. And so he immediately wanted to receive the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. Actually, the whole of the last rites, which is more than the anointing of the sick. It's by adicum, it's having your confession heard, it includes the apostolic pardon, it's a, it's a longer series of rites. 
And so we did that. I heard Father Gerald's last confession, and our prior, Father Vincent, gave him the anointing and viatica. And then he whispered to us, he said, come back later and do it again. <laughs> he wanted to make sure it stuck. This is the right disposition. We should not fear sacraments. They are signs of God's love and healing. And if we remember always that they are a sign of God's love and healing, even if that healing does not manifest itself in a physical healing, it affects, without doubt, a spiritual healing. And we always have to remember as Christians that our gaze is always towards heaven. Always towards heaven. And so that spiritual healing is the one that lasts. It's the one that we carry to eternity. And it's the one that we should desire most earnestly and ardently. Let us pray our prayer to St. Jude. It's on page 14. St. Jude, glorious apostle, faithful servant and friend of Jesus, the name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many, but the church honors and invokes you universally as the patron of difficult and desperate cases. Pray for me who am in need of God's mercy. Make use, I implore you, of that particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help was most despaired of. Come to my assistance in this great need, that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations, and sufferings, particularly. With you, and all the elect throughout all eternity, I promise you, O blessed Jude, to be ever mindful of this great favor, I will honor you as my special and powerful patron and encourage devotion to you. St. Jude, pray for us and for all who honor and invoke thy aid. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.